let's first look at solving uh, length contraction problems, or sorry, time dilation problems, my bad. Uh, so the, the way you go about solving time dilation problems is you're thinking about what is the time that is going to be measured by an outside observer versus what's the time that's going to be me measured by an inside observer. And what I mean by that is one person has to be in the reference frame of the quote-unquote moving object, and one person is outside of that. So it's kind of like um, driving a car. Somebody is in the car and somebody's outside the car looking at it. And so those are going to be the two things when we talk about the time. So here's the example. The star Sirius, the brightest in the night sky, is 8.6 light years from Earth. If you travel in the ship at 0.8 C, an observer on Earth calculates it'll take you 10.32 years to get there. So the way I found that out, by the way, is um, I basically took... Uh, so 8.6 years is how long it would take to go 8.6 light years. So a light year is a measure of distance. It's how far you go in a year's time if you travel at the speed of light. So at 80% the speed of light, it'll take you longer. This is how long it would take you, 10.32 years. Um, so how long would you measure it to take if you're on uh, a spaceship? So the most important part is figuring out what's T and what's T naught. So T is the observed time and T naught is the proper time. The proper time can only be measured by a person who is in the reference frame that's being observed. Because if you're an outside observer, you're always going to measure something different. Um, because one second for you will not look like one second from that perspective. So if I'm outside looking in, um, the inside second doesn't look like a second to me. So this 10.32 years, that is going to be the measured value by an outside observer. That's going to be T. Someone on Earth is going to see it take 10.32 years. Uh, but someone on the spaceship is going to measure something different. That's T naught. And the speed that the person's traveling at V is going to be 0.8 C. So the equation we're going to set up is this one, the time dilation equation. And that's going to be T, which is 10.32. And I'll go ahead, let me transcribe the equation here so that you can see how it lines up. So 10.32 equals t naught, which we don't know, over the square root of 1 minus v squared, which is 0.8c over c squared. Now, notice that 0.8c in its entirety goes in for v because the velocity is not 0.8. The velocity is 0.8c. So you have to include that there. The number one mistake people make is getting t and t not mixed up together. But the second number one mistake people make is with this part here. So you need to actually square 0.8 and c. You can't square just one. You have to square 0.8 and c. Likewise, notice I'm not actually going to plug in the value for the speed of light. There's a reason for that. I'll show you here in a second. So when you square 0.8c, you get 0.64c uh, squared. And that means the c squareds will cancel. And now you see why I left c in the equation, because it's going to cancel out with c squared, which is also why you've got to square the c. But don't forget to square the 0.8 also. You've got to square them both. So this gives me this, 10.32 equals t naught over the square root of. Now, it's 1 minus 0.64. So 1 minus 0.64 is 0.36. See if you can actually see what's going on in my calculator here. Oh, yeah, looks like you can. Actually, let's do this. Here we go. Is it better over here? It is better over here. Okay, so I'm going to square root 0.36 to give me 0.6. Come on, self, you could have done that in your head. Um, 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply that number here. So when I square root the 0.36, I get 0.6. I'm going to multiply 0.6 to both sides. So times 10.32. and I get 6.192. So my answer for T naught, so the observed time for a person on the spaceship would be six point, we'll go ahead and round it um, to 6.19. It is really important on these problems to check your work and make sure your answer makes sense. So it's called time dilation. That means that the person observing from the outside should measure a longer time than the person experiencing it um, inside the reference frame. In this case, the person on Earth measured it to be 10.32. They're outside the reference frame. The person in the reference frame with the spaceship, 6.19. Yes, that does match up. T naught should be less than T, and it is, okay? There you go.